The only difference is just the size of the square foot. North remain as farmland, but if rezoning to residential is a means to eliminate the noise from Bulk Rock, we're for it. I appreciate your consideration, John Van Ice. So first, we have Mr. Walt Puckett, who has served the town of North River on two boards, both the planning board from 2003 to 2006 and the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee from July of 08 to March of this past year. Mr. Puckett, there you are. <laughs> I want to present you this plaque. There's a little in there. Thank 
well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. she may have misunderstood me. Is that right? So if she doesn't want you. If not, we'll get it to her. Okay. The other was for Sarah Wall, who served also on two boards, the Board of Adjustment from May of 14 to April of this year, and the Planning Board, April 2011 to February of 2013. And if you wonder why she doesn't have a bag, she'll have a bag for sure. <laughs> The consent agenda is purchased on tonight. Motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Tonight, the first item on our agenda is the state of the airport. So we, with us, we have Director Lou Blywise with the Asheville Airport, and he will update us. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the Town Council. You should have received one of our annual reports, so you have it for future reference and pleasure play of reading when you have insomnia. Uh, <clears throat> for air service for 2020, uh, we have four carriers serving the airport. We had Allegiant, American Airlines, Delta, and United. We had 18 destinations during 2020, most of it because of COVID. I'm not going to go into all the list of 18, but the services of the cities that we added last year in 2020 was Boston, Sarasota, Florida, Houston, Texas, Austin, Texas, and Chicago Midway. We did, because of COVID, lost Philadelphia and Detroit. Uh, Philadelphia is back now in our marketplace. Detroit has not returned. Passenger standpoint, <clears throat> total passengers for 2020 was 704,972, which is down 56%. Seats in the market was 624,426, which is down 40%. Our operations from an airline perspective, <coughs> excuse me, airline perspective was 16,856, and that was down 31%. General aviation and military was down 18% for a total of 41,348 operations. From a construction standpoint at the airport, we completed our interior infrastructure, with the, which was our utility upgrade to water and sewer in, in, in uh, preparation for a new terminal building. Uh, that was approximately $1.8 million. <clears throat> we completed a ground transportation upgrade along with new parking areas for also $1.8 million. Uh, we are in the process right now working on a south commercial apron that's under construction at $9.5 million. Um, we also uh, finally had our runway commission in November of last year uh, after a three-year delay uh, because of construction issues with contractors. Uh, we also last August bought, purchased the Broadmoor Golf Course. That was purchased of $2.75 million. We are in the process of now of negotiating with a hotel operator to build a hotel and a conference center on the golf course property along with maintaining and improving the golf course. And lastly, our big project was our terminal project uh, that we are hoping to undertake here in, within the year. Uh, we had public hearings. Unfortunately, they were supposed to be uh, happening during the time of COVID hit. So we did have uh, virtual public hearings. We met with a lot of the community uh, stakeholders, got a lot of input on what the terminal means to West North Carolina and this area. Uh, and uh, hopefully you have seen some renderings of what the new uh, terminal will look like from a conceptual design process. From a community standpoint, we'd like to hold community events. Unfortunately, because of uh, COVID, the only event we had was early in the year, and that was our annual Wings for Autism program, uh, which went over very well. From a financial standpoint, our operating revenues uh, for the uh, year for us was $9.6 million. Our operating expenses was $9.2 million, which put us in the black of $400,000, uh, which is the lowest in my tenure here in 13 years, uh, all because of, of, of COVID. We did receive CARES Act funding, uh, two of them that were done in 2020, that it amounted to about $18 million, and we should be receiving the last tranche sometime this year, which probably be in the 10 to $12 million. We don't know those final numbers yet. So that did help us operate the airport and keep it 
uh, with some net operating profits. Our assets at the end of the year were $169,081,647, which is an increase of approximately $14.2 million over 2019. And lastly, every two years, the Division of Aviation under the Department of Transportation does an economic impact study for the airports in the state. And Asheville Regional Airport had a $1.95 billion economic impact to Western North Carolina and our community. With that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Yes, sir? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> questions? No? No? Y'all know where to, have to get a hold of me. If you ever have any questions, please be happy to answer them. Have a great evening. Thank, Thank you. you. The next item on the agenda is our public hearing for the rezoning request R21-01 and Lord Edward Church. Is there a motion to enter into public hearing? I'll make that motion. Second. Those in favor of entering into public hearing? Aye. Aye. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, before you tonight, we have rezoning request 21-01, which is a request for rezoning from an elected word. International Church on the Mother Bridge Road. The request before you this evening is to rezone property currently zoned Mills River Residential, which is MR30, to Mills River General Business, or MRGB. Um, included with your staff report are the two sections of the town's code uh, regarding what's allowed on each of those districts. Um, the residential district obviously is very much residential centric. Uh, general business allows for more uh, business off business uh, cleaning uh, uses, including things like hospitals, automobile, automobile sales, retail, uh, hardware stores, basically anything you would expect in a general business area. Uh, again, those those are included. Those uses are included as part of the uh, the staff report itself. Uh, the application itself lists the proposed use of land as general business for office warehouse. Um, and I, I think it's important to consider, um, it is important to consider all uses that are allowed in the uh, of the general business district. Uh, if for some reason this particular project were to fall through uh, or or come to fruition and then vacate in a few years, uh, any good, any use allowed within the general business district would be allowed at that point. Um, the consideration of adopted plans, the 2005 land use plan recognizes this as low density residential. Uh, planning board met on May 20th and on a vote of three to two recommended approval of this request as it's been presented. Staff does recommend the, uh, denial of this request as presented due to the inconsistency with the adopted plan as well as the forthcoming uh, most of a comprehensive plan. Uh, and the, you have the council's options. Uh, there are several. You may approve the request as it's been presented. You may approve it with a smaller area than what has been requested in favor of for additional consideration, or you could deny the request. Uh, two, two important things to consider in your deliberations this evening is your statement of consistency, which is included in attachment B, and statement of reasonableness, which is included in attachment E. Uh, those are required for per state law anytime that a rezoning uh, request is submitted to the town. The council has to consider whether or not it is consistent or inconsistent with any adopted plans and policies, um, which is a consistent statement. And then a uh, statement of reasonableness has been drafted, but the uh, items regarding the, uh, just to uh, fill in the blanks, yeah, I think it's a way to say that, the statement of reasonableness is included in attachment E, uh, requires North Carolina General Statute 160B requires when adopting or rejecting any petition for zoning that the uh, state or analyzing the reasonableness of the proposed rezoning shall be approved by the governing board. Uh, so I have listed each of those. Those come straight from the statute. Um, and if you choose to uh, approve this this evening, uh, we'll need to fill up those blanks as part of your motion to approve this request. Uh, Daniel? Yes. The 2005 Mm -hmm. Comprehensive plan mm -hmm. was never officially adopted. I was not aware of that. It was acknowledged. 
Now, so is that having said that, why is the current comprehensive plan that has not been adopted yet? Why is that? Why is either one of them even mentioned? I was I. Must have been a mistake, and I thought the 2005 land use plan was adopted. No. Well as the uh, that's why that one was in there. And the land use making those river comprehensive plan uh, is included because that's part of the consideration when looking for the future. Is any future any adopted land plans or policies? Well, that's not adopted. It's been through the public review process, and um, that's why it's included as well. So, so. This comprehensive plan that we're going to talk about after a while mm -hmm. has not been adopted. That's correct. So why even mention it in this package? I think it's relevant because that, that plan has been through the public engagement process and the final draft is before you this evening. And according to the land use plan that will be presented to you after this hearing, um, that plan hasn't, the land use map has not changed in several months after so, is it help me understand this? So, we're holding these people accountable for something that this council has not even adopted yet. Is it yes or no? Yes or no? The comprehensive plan is not adopted. Okay. So why are we holding them accountable to something that's not even adopted yet? You're not holding anyone accountable at this moment. This is a draft of a consistency statement. So why make council can so why make reference to it? As I mentioned, it's been through the public review process and I think that it's relevant to the discussion. So if someone at the General Assembly allows a bill to go forward until it becomes law, it's not law. That's correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Right. Other questions for Daniel from council? Do you have, do you have a map handy, Daniel, that shows uh, any other general business in the town? I can pull one up on the computer. Can you, please? Uh, how close is any any other general business to this part of the property? Hey, one moment. Sir, can I say something? Not not yet. We're gonna okay. finish the council discussions. Highlighted is the Connecticut Work property. Let me turn on the zone so you can see how it relates. So the property in blue, that's general business, and that's what the request is before you this evening is to go from this MR30 to general business. So what is the green? Green is everywhere. So if this could this be considered a spot zone? Yes. And that would and that is allowed, not allowed? It is allowed with a reasonable basis. Reasonable being. Is that subjected to whoever's uh, making the determination, like yourself or, or this council? The, the council would have to decide what is reasonable. Other questions? What were the um, dissent, dissenting council planning board? What was their objection? I don't remember specifically. 
I don't want to hazard a guess. I'm talking about it. Anyway. Daniel, with the, um, we all saw pictures of the warehouse type operation that's being proposed for that mm -hmm. piece of property. Would that be allowed in an acre commercial? I don't know. I don't know the size of the building. Do we know how big the structure was? 40,000 40, is what he wants to build, which I was told that 10,000 uh, was the maximum for neighborhood commercial. That's correct. So that's the only difference from a neighborhood commercial uh, business would be just the size of the warehouse that he needs the storage generators. He does backup generators. And so the answer to your question, system. no, it would not be allowed. I'm sure I'm going to hear this later. Let me get, get the other side. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Pastor, if you wanted to speak again. Yes. Other, and then Mr. Nelson. As we pointed out at the planning meeting, we're just within walking distance of a number of businesses. There's the daycare down the street on Butler Bridge. Then there's Air Check, which is just a little bit farther down. And then around the corner, you have big businesses, Pepsi, uh, Amazon, uh, FedEx, uh, Volvo, uh, a lot of other businesses uh, in that area. In fact, that blue one down at the bottom left-hand corner is, a gen is, is the same general business. So it's not that far away. You could you know, walk that in a few minutes. Chair, oh, I've got a question for the gentleman, mm -hmm. please. Yes, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I know that the picture that you passed out is just a general picture. Yes, sir. But I have a hard time putting a, a building similar to that in a residential area. I know that Pepsi's air, air checks, you know, so forth, but I got real heartburn of putting a commercial building that basically a, in the middle of a circle with residential. Now, the other problem that I have is that there is that I shared here at the planning board meeting a couple of weeks ago. Guy seemed like a pretty nice guy, but he also said, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that he's planning on renting out spaces in this particular development. In the last meeting, he went through that and said he wouldn't do that. Okay. Uh, and 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 I would like to point out though that our church is a big metal building that's already that's there. That's yeah. And uh, of course, my wife and I own the house next door to the church, and we would have no problem with it. I have another email here from a, a man that lives in Hollywood Farm, Joe Kilpatrick, and uh, he is in favor of it. So, so, so the uh, planning board meeting that, that I attended, yeah. one of the planning board members, and this is a question for Daniel, is that to get, to send notices out to the adjoining property owners, mm -hmm. have you heard anything back from, from them? Just what uh, Mr. Pastor Ellis has said to give me, uh, and I guess the public. I do have one, if I may, yeah. uh, I know. from Joe, Joe Patrick, yeah. Okay. okay. We did talk to some of the other neighbors, and, and uh, Mr. Marlowe across the road has no problem with it, he said. We talked to uh, Lois Pryor, and she said she didn't have any problem at all with it. And the principal, we talked to him, too, and he said he wouldn't have a problem with a with an office warehouse there of that nature. So 
And what about the other side, the Valley View Road side? The Valley View Road side? Uh, I didn't uh, catch anyone there, but uh, yeah. so we haven't talked to them. Okay. Uh, right. Thank you. You're welcome. Brian Cassidy, do you remember the um, timeline for the Butler Bridge Road? June Rework. 8th. What? June 8th. No, I mean, the expansion. When the DOT is going to look to expand. They're talking about four nine. Yeah. yeah. It keeps, being, keeps being pushed out. So we don't have the day. Yeah, it's, oh, I'm sorry. The, the road improvements. I'm okay, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's a ways out at this point, but it will eventually happen. Like Roger, I, I have some reservations about putting a doing spot zoning to put a commercial structure basically in the neighborhood. I know you've got some businesses around you. Um, I do have some concerns about uh, the contiguous nature of that neighborhood area, and then all of a sudden you've got this warehouse, large warehouse, uh, 4,000 square feet. That's that's a pretty big operation. So I, I sympathize with your needs and your desire to sell this property. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with the with the consistency factor of that area, and um, I, I can definitely see how this benefits the church and benefits the congregation. Um, but I'm struggling to see how it would benefit the rest of the community other than the 10 jobs you mentioned. So I just wanted to throw that out there. For size comparison sake, do you know how big the Lowe's distribution center is, square footage was? I believe it's approximately 9,000 square feet. So that's why I'm just trying to picture. <clears throat> okay, if there's no other council questions for the moment, we can now open to public comment for this item. Mr. Nelson, would you like to speak now? Hello. Nice to see faces change. <laughs> uh, I actually live on Water River Bridge Road, and uh, uh, I, as I spoke, I came to the planning uh, meeting here a couple weeks uh, last week, and uh, uh, I will have a hearing from chemotherapy. I will extra chatty from that too. Forgive me, but uh, uh, I there, there's enough noise in the area there where I could not see anybody. Uh, buying that property if you build a house or anything. It's just my opinion, but, but uh, it's there's you know enough noise already there where it would you know I, I don't see it being used for, for residential is the point. Uh, and the other thing is because I like people and I'm not been that shy, I have talked to a lot of the neighbors and stuff and I have yet to meet anyone who is against it in the area. So I don't remember everyone's names, but I've spoken to a lot of people and so it's a business I understand that uh, is uh, you know, related to technology, so it's a, uh, it's, it's a neat, neat business, you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's uh, not really the generators, and also I was talking to the, the gentleman that would like to, to build there, and it's uh, also uh, about some items that have to do with uh, uh, electric cars and things like that, you know, so uh, they're not manufacturing anything there. So that's a plus. So it's not going to be a big noisy boom boom type uh, uh, business. Uh, so it's kind of benign in that respect. But uh, I think personally, I think it'd be a win win for everybody. So I appreciate your consideration. It's going to bring a few jobs, and uh, it could be good. A good thing, I believe it would be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Is there additional public comment about this? All right, more discussion. My worry is if, if something fell through with that particular buyer. So we can't make this conditional to that transaction, correct? That's correct. Once we rezone it, it's, it could fall through when someone else moves in and builds something that we are horrified by. He is going to leave it to his son, and his son is working for the business. So I think it's going to be long term. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's going to pay cash. Yes, I'm willing to show you that. Um, we saw this before 
they own plan more than other plans in no way. Whenever you go to rezone a piece of property, you can't you don't rezone in that for specific use on that next day. So it could turn out to be something that it, that could be detrimental to the to the surrounding area. Schools right behind that. Uh, they care about their I'm, I'm really nervous about putting on this myself. This is my two cents. I think I'm, I'm in agreement with that. I think the <clears throat> the way the property is zoned over there, that it, it, would, it wouldn't be a far stretch to make it neighborhood commercial. Um, I think that's more in line with that area over there than, than going to general business. Um, there's no adjoining properties that are joint that are general business. Um, yes, it is down the road, but then again, then you're getting into a spot zoning situation. And I, and I feel like, you know, it's, we're battling a little bit of circumstances that, you know, are not in anybody's control. You know, we have to look at it from what is the parcel now, what's the adjoining parcels that fits, and what is harmonious to what we're trying to accomplish. And, and I, I don't feel that at this point, the general business will accomplish that. You know, it, even if it, it, it doesn't matter what anybody's intended uses are, there's a lot of, there's a lot more uses in general business than there is in neighborhood commercial or in MR30. Um, and once you open that door, then 50 years down the road, somebody could do something else. You can, it, it, it's one of those things that changes over time. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not willing to open that door. I make a motion to be closed the public hearing. I'm sorry. I'm in favor of closing the public hearing. Um, right. Okay. Is there a motion one way or the other? Does our motion need to contain the, uh, I know it needs to contain the statement of consistency, um, but now since we've pointed out, is it still, if there's a question about the adoption of the comprehensive plan, do we still need to have it, of the previous 2005 comprehensive plan? Do we have to issue a statement of consistency because if it was never adopted, or we have some other? It, it was adopted in June of 2006. <clears throat> you can take out the section about the the upcoming plan, if you know, okay. prefer to keep it clean. It, it would be uh, worth mentioning on the statement of reasonableness, even when denying a request. Um, you have a couple of characteristics in there. So, for example, number one is consistency with the surrounding area. We kind of already mentioned the fact that there's no other general business around there, uh, the potential for um, undesirable development, things of that nature. Does both the statement of consistency and the statement of reasonableness need to be contained within the motion? Yes, please. That's a good motion. Was there by making make a yeah. I don't know. If you're finished. I wasn't finished before. So I'll make a motion to deny this rezoning permit or application. And the reason was, uh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Number one and number three on this list. And there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Can I add this motion that's inconsistent with your current comprehensive plan? Just fine. Fair enough. All right. I'd like to add to his motion that it's inconsistent with the current comprehensive plan. Just fine. Okay. Thank you. 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 Th
I'd like to add something to the motion. That's okay. Is that these people have been to like three or four planning board meetings? I mean, four planning board meetings. Mm -hmm. So if the council will allow, is that, has it already been second? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll second the motion with the stipulation. It's okay. Since we drug these people in and out and back and forth and so forth, that we refund their application fee. I'll second that. Okay. Do you have that really long three part motion? I, I, I do. Were you okay with him amending your motion? No. Randy. Randy. Randy's, 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 Randy's okay Randy's with Are you okay Randy. with him amending your motion? Yes. 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 Okay. And then, then he can second it. I was concerned we had an extra motion. Okay. You let us know when you're ready. Okay. okay. Did, did we vote? Not yet. No, so no. we have a motion and a second. Um, to deny the rezoning request. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Daniel, can you all work with the church to see if there's other other areas of relief for them or um, American, the rescue plan funding? Is there, y'all studied that a little bit, any relief for the church, you know, COVID related? We can certainly look into it. I don't know off the top of my head, but we can certainly look into it. Because that is something that the government set aside, you know, relief money for mm -hmm. places affected by COVID. And if that's Absolutely. a legitimate COVID um, casualty, then maybe we can help you find some relief that way. Thank you. Daniel, have your contact information? It's on the application. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. For you. Michael, maybe that's your. Okay. Thank you. All right. C on our agenda is a public hearing for the Making Mills River Comprehensive Plan. Is there a motion to enter in the public hearing? I'll make that motion to enter the public hearing. Comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plan. Thank you. I'll say. All in favor of opening the public hearing? Aye. See you again, Daniel. Yes. Yes, I'm just making a note. Go ahead, catch up. Okay. Before you this evening, you have a uh, resolution in consideration of adoption of the Lincoln Military 2040 Comprehensive Plan. Um, for the benefit of the public and those listening, I'll just give a quick summary of this plan got started uh, officially in 2019 and through. Uh, several rounds of, of public engagement, public comment, public review, um, and considering the effects of the impact of COVID, uh, the last uh, year of uh, engagement has been mostly remote, uh, and, and much to our pleasant surprise, engagement was still very high throughout that period. Uh, so there was a steering committee established for this project, made up of uh, volunteers from the community, planning board members, and town council. Mayor Davis and Mayor Brooke Tenkaski were on that committee. Um, and we worked with uh, Alan Steinbeck, PS Chief Consultant, to um, put this plan together. And we are here this evening tonight to, uh, for you all to conduct the public hearing and decide whether or not you'd like to adopt this and make the official policy for the town. I recommend it. Council questions for Daniel from Comprehensive Plan. All the, all the advisory boards that participate in the town manager are seeing this. I'm sorry? All the boards within the town manager have you reviewed the conference plan? We presented it to everybody. I don't believe we gave it to the Parks and Recreation Committee in a formal sense. Okay. But we certainly made it available to the public. Okay. But the rest of the boards and committees saw it. But the Ag Committees and all these other committees mm -hmm. did see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Ag Committee spent a couple of months looking at the land use map specifically. Um, but we did present the entire plan. Okay. 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 
this is the chair of the ag committee that's right he was on the steering committee as well so oh, thank you yeah something like that now i forgot that so ads have a lot of input with this um, document that's right and that's a good point i should probably mention some of the key takeaways from the plan for those benefit of listening um natural space preservation or farmland preservation were two very strong and very high priorities that came out of all this work uh, and much like no service priorities has been since it's incorporated in support of farmland preservation and agriculture in general it's a very uh, high high priority of, of this plan which is to be expected that's, that's to be expected to happen in the project so that reinforces what we've heard from the community uh, many times over are there any other parties in the audience this evening that to present regarding public Is there public comment regarding the comprehensive plan? Okay. Discuss, discuss. I'll just I have a couple of comments. Um, I was at an event a couple of months ago and ran into um, <clears throat> an elected official who is um, very high up in the, in the um, Harrison County government structure, and we were talking about this comprehensive plan. And I was describing to him how the public really drove this from the very beginning. And everything that we did was related to getting out the public, getting the survey in front of them, and gathering as much information as we possibly could. And he said, that, that sounds really interesting and like a great project. He said, is there any way I can look at this? I said, I've got a copy at home, a draft copy. I can send you, let you look at it. He called me two days later and he said, I read every word of that plan. And he said, what I would love to see you do is send us to every municipality in Western North Carolina, just by itself, with a note tucked inside and said, this is how it's done. So I took that as, as a pretty good compliment <laughs> that this process has been right on the money all the way through that it is a, a direct uh, result and, and a direct manifestation of the wealth of the people in the world. And my, my second comment, oh, everybody loves the Beatles, right? Who? <laughs> the Beatles. <laughs> some, of us are, hey, some of us are old enough to remember the Beatles. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite Beatle was George Harrison. And some of you like John Lennon, some of you are McCartney fans and whatever. I, I love George Harrison. And George Harrison I used to like to say that it's important to create and preserve the image of your choice. And never mind that he created that from Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> but the citizen of Mills River created an image for us. And it's up to us to preserve and protect that image that they've created. So the fact that they prioritize agriculture and protecting green spaces and having a quiet, peaceful community, I think it's very instructive to us. I'm in favor of this plan. I have watched it all the way through. And when, when we talk about a steering committee, and Shay and I were on that also, Brian and Randy at certain points, yes. Um, we did not steer it in any direction. We kept it from running up on the shore. That's all. It was it was 100% public comment. And and how do we how do we filter that data out to get to what's really important? And so that's that's what we did as a steering committee. As Daniel mentioned, this has been through every single advisory board. The planning board has seen it and approved it. The ag committee has seen it and approved it. I'm very proud of this document, and I, I, I strongly feel we should move forward with it. This is a vision for measure, and I think it's a great vision. I feel like it started before 2019. <laughs> Seems like a no, longer. Absolutely, the project did. I just okay. mean, in terms of the steering committee and, okay. and the sort of formal beginning of the process, but it's been going on for many years. We had a lot of meetings, fire departments, and right. people getting you know active, and mm -hmm. so. Been a long, long process. Mm -hmm. I think it's a Randy and 
yours and my lifetime on the planning board. You can get this far with me. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Jim Humphrey's big. Do you have any idea how many staff hours have been consumed with this conference plan? I don't think you can ever. That's a really <laughs> tough question. Um, no. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I can look back at the, the hours that we paid Alan and, and, and extrapolate somewhat based on that. Uh, but I couldn't tell you the top of my head. Yeah. Think about all those things we went to. And... Yeah, it's just been a, it's been a ton of work, and I'm I'm glad to see yeah. it come come to an end. And I appreciate. I know it hasn't been easy, especially last year. And all this, and I appreciate the time and effort you put in. Well, thank you. We're, we're certainly happy to do it. And I want to second what Councilman Caskey mentioned a moment ago about the steering committee. Um, Alan and I didn't come in with any preconceived notions of what this plan would look like, um, and so. We listened to the public input presented to the committee. They gave us some guidance. We went, did some work, came back every month for several months. So it was, it was a very iterative process. Um, the student committee was very engaged. I'm, I'm very pleased with the amount of public engagement we got, the direction we got from all of the various boards and committees. Did you close this out? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I have a second. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. It's a pleasure. I'll make the motion that we approve the making bills that are comprehensive. I will second. All those in favor of adopting the 2040 making bills are a comprehensive plan. Aye. 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 More nerdy math meeting. <laughs> now we got to put it in motion. Yeah. That's right. I'll find another thing. Yeah, yeah. Can we make it the bar? We can make it the bar, yeah. Okay. Next public hearing hope for parks and recreation comprehensive master plan. I will make a motion that we enter the public hearing. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Are you presenting this one, Cole? I'll just give, give a quick introduction, uh, similar to what I just said about the comprehensive plan. The, the Parks Recreation Plan has been a very iterative process and, and direct response to public comment. Um, and I, I failed to mention this in the last public hearing, but survey responses and those were incredible. Um, so they got very good responses in this work. Compline had very good responses in this work. So I think what you what you've seen is is very much a reflection of what the town wants and needs in terms of its. Uh, Parks and Recreation needs. Um, it's also important to remember that um, yes, there are some capital expenditures uh, for some of the projects included in the plan, uh, but those don't have to happen immediately. Um, it's, it's not the intent that those begin on July 1st. Uh, so just bear that in mind as you consider uh, your action on this slide. And with that, I'm going to turn over to Cole to give uh, more information. Yeah, just to reiterate what Daniel says, I think that was going to plan um, our parks committee has put a ton of work uh, and effort into this. Um, we've had great positive response from the community. Um, we've got a number of um, you know surveys that we've done, we can put sessions. Um, and people are very excited about what this plan is and, and what it's going to mean to our department. Um, and again, just to reiterate what Daniel says, this is essentially a guide of what the next 10 years of what people want to see in Mills River. Um, and with that guide, our next step in that process is going to be to figure out how we can make that happen. And then we can start looking at phases of plans and how we can, can do all that stuff. Um, but this is really, you know, this is our playbook. This is our guide of, of this is what people in Mill River said they wanted. And so now it's our job and our opportunity to figure out how we as staff, you as council can start to make some of the, these dreams a reality. Um, so with that, if you guys have questions, Sarah Gross with um, stage design is on, so I'm happy to answer any questions you have or any Questions you have for Sarah? So I've listened to what Daniel has said. Nicole, I've listened to what you said. So my question is to either, either one of these or both of these. I've not, is that the public needs to know what this price tag is. What is that price tag? What is that? Let me rephrase that. 
what is the estimate as of tomorrow on implementing this? Let me, let me preface what I'm about to say with the fact that the estimates that are, have been prepared have been prepared today at this point in time and with the best available information and prices will change over time. Um, so if I can pass these out if you'd like so you can see the, the harder numbers. But again, I want, I want to caution this council that um, the, the point of doing this plan in part is to identify needs and priorities and therefore we can identify funding sources such as Part F, which is a very big grant, uh, grant opportunity for all municipalities. Um, cost is very important. But I don't want the um, granting agencies to think that um, there's any concern with the plan because of lack of ability to implement. Uh, I just caution you. Yeah. And I, I also wanted to take a moment if I could. Implement this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. How much is it? Is that I've seen the figures. I want the public and I want the press to know what those figures are. Okay. For the uh, estimates we have as of last month for the park project, for the Missouri Park site plan, it's $1.5 million. And for the Banner Farm Road property, it's three point five million dollars. So that's everything in the plan at one time. Uh, whenever it's appropriate, I would like to step in real quick too. So, so let, let me know when it's appropriate. Six million dollars. Mm -hmm. So is that if we implement this over a ten-year period? which is what Nicole just said. Mm -hmm. We're talking roughly, if my math is right, roughly 600,000 a year. That does not include inflation, what's going to happen, because is that if you go out and, and price a car today, mm -hmm. and you go next year, it's going to be a whole lot higher. So we're talking about six, roughly six million dollars mm -hmm. tomorrow, give or take. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. So is that if we go over a ten-year period, mm -hmm. now we may be talking about ten million, mm -hmm. or whatever the magic number is. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Give or take. I'm, I'm, given prices today and the economy, I'm not even having to guess. If it would go up or down, um, it's ten years is a long time from now. Right. But I'm not going to give you my pen answer that. I just want the public to know that the council adopts this plan as it is now. Tomorrow, if we implement this, it's going to be roughly six million dollars. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? And the, 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 the arithmetic is correct, yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Daniel, we're not, if, if, we, uh, if we adopt this master plan for the park, we're not committing to spend any money on any of this, right? Okay. So any, any capital projects that we, it would, it would come before us just like any other capital project. If we if we've done any of this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is it is it in the budget this year? I don't know. Well, that's, that's what I'm asking. asking. Then, well, I mean, yeah, that's exactly right. So the, the way so that would come to us any of this stuff that's in this plan yeah. would come to us just like any other capital expenditure that we say yes or no to, right? I would assume. I would hope, but you never know. Well, that's kind of why I'm getting it out here in the in the public now, and I'm wanting to make it clear that we're not committing to spend right. any money. That's right. There, there's you're not bound to any of this at all. This, as Nicole mentioned, this is a guide for future investments, and just like we do, like we're doing with the budget right now, each year, if there's a project to be submitted, it would be submitted with all the background information, 
to justify it, how we would pay for it, all of those sorts of things. And it's up for the council, just like it would be for any other expenditure as to whether or not you want to fund it. Because I know what's going to happen. Now, tell me, Nicole, if suddenly somebody gives the town, you know, a bunch of acreage, how does that blow this plan up? Like, we start over, except when we have. Do you know someone who's gifting to the land? <laughs> just, just, just looking at all the possibilities here. Um, no, I, I don't think it does. I think that, you know, down the road, if that were to, you know, someone were to gift us a lot of land, um, you know, obviously we wouldn't say no to a large gift donation to anybody out there listening that has one large gift yeah. donation. Um, but also, I mean, in this plan, there we know, even in these two parcels we have, that as the town grows and the needs grow, we couldn't fit everything that people said they wanted in there. And so we already have an outline of um, some of the stuff that people have said they wanted, but we know couldn't fit on the acreage we currently have. So as we acquire more land, that's where we're going to look into building some of those other things. Um, and this is something that has to get revisited. Just like the last master plan was done over 10 years ago, and that never came to fruition. Things change. People's needs change. People's wants change. New people come into the community, and they may have large donation gifts that maybe move things to the forefront. Um, this is really just a guide for you all. It's really a tool for you all as you're prioritizing money and budgets. We can look at this and say, you know, this was the highest priority when we did our surveys and we did our planning, and this is where our biggest needs are. So that's might be a really good place to focus everything. It's not we're going out tomorrow and building this entire plan, just like when this. You know, this place was originally designed. It had additional baseball fields that we now know were in the floodway. It had playgrounds that we now know would wash away if we ever tried to do it. So it, it, it's a, I want to say it's a fluid plan as in 10 years if this isn't built, I would be very surprised if we did every single thing in this plan in the next 10 years and we can check it off and take it out. And that's really not the purpose. It's really a, a guide, just like the Making Mills River plan, it didn't change any zoning right then and there or any guidelines or anything like that. This is really just for us to have a working guide of this is what people in Mills River said they wanted. We had great public response, and this is our opportunity to look. And someone says, Well, why are you spending that money? You can say, This is why we're spending that money. The people in Mills River said this is what they want. Are you currently looking at any grants? Based on and there is a number I have in the back of our mind, but until this plan is adopted, um, and I would get permission to currently seek funding, um, but there are lots of opportunities that I think will we will have a lot of doors open once this plan is adopted. How much did the consultant cost us? Roughly. We budgeted thirty-five thousand dollars last year for it, and I don't think we exceeded that. Either. No. I don't know if I have the actual I think my biggest thing with this, and I'm in favor of the parks plan, um, is that we don't have to spend money. There's not a single item on the parks plan that's in the budget right now. Never will be spent until we put it in the budget. Never. You think? How does, how does money get spent on the budget? Past experiences tell me that if it's in the budget, it will be spent. None of this is in the budget. That's the point. You what? None of, the, none of the items that are in the parks plan are in the budget. We have oversight of the budget. So as we move forward, if we have a parks plan and we decided to adopt it, and we decide, okay, this year, this item is the top wish list item for the people of Mills River. And, and the, the other thing that, that Nicole said was, this is what the people of Mills River want. And that, <clears throat> to me, is very instructive because it's not what Nicole wants. It's not what our consultant wants. It's not necessarily what we want. It is the direct will of the people of Mills River. We want these items. This is what we want to see, the kind of amenities that we are paying for and we want to see at the park. So, you know, I, I think if you're looking at this, you know, I keep, I keep in my mind, I keep coming back to like a, a video game where you, you hit a certain 
level and your character levels up, well, that's what happens when we adopt the parks plan. Because we, if we, we now have a comprehensive plan, it's in place as of time. If we have a conference plan, if we have a parks plan, if we have a bike path plan, all those things sort of level us up to where we can start to bring in lots and lots and lots of grant money. And so we don't even have to pay for these things because you've got other agencies who are willing to donate money, who are, are, are uh, going to pay for these things for us. If you go the entire the entire opposite direction, if we didn't adopt a park plan, or if we adopted a park plan with nothing on it, just a blank sheet of paper, we don't get any of that. So I understand that you know we can look at the entire wish list and say, well, it's five million dollars. We're never gonna spend five million dollars. So being the negative dog in the mess. <laughs> yeah. So my first question. Is there any money for this proposed park plan in the upcoming budget? Yes or no? No. Okay, thank you. Now, my second point is this. We've got a good park. Everybody loves it. So, it's that we're driving a Chevrolet right now. Do we need the Cadillac? And you say, oh, there's grants out there. There are grants out there. But the thing about it, at some point in time, it's a 50-50 match. Or it could be a standalone one thing grant. Or it could be the citizens of Mills River paying for this. Now, you might get a grant from the state. At some point in time, you're going to have to pay for this. Whether it's your income taxes, whether it's your town tax, whatever. At some point in time, like the stimulus money, you're going to have to pay for this at some point in time. Okay, thank you. My point. Uh, hey, I'm a conservative. My, <laughs> my, point, my point now, of course, um, is that by adopting the plan, you lose nothing. By adopting the plan, you stand to gain an awful lot. If you do nothing, you don't have those opportunities. So I'm in favor of this plan. It's, it's been developed, I think, in a very smart way, and I'm ready to move forward with it. Is there any public comment on the Parks and Rec Comprehensive Plan? Anyone? You'll introduce yourself. I'm Tammy Ross. I live around the corner. Um, I'm on the Parks and Committee. Y'all see me. So I'm obviously for the park plan. And honestly, I'm just going to say the same thing y'all have already heard Nicole say and Brian say. And um, This park plan is really the same thing that you said about the other plan. Uh, really, we did not brainstorm any of these ideas. It was literally people took the surveys, they did the input sessions, they met at the fire station, they met here, they did the Facebook and did the Mentimeter. Uh, it was 100% collecting data and getting people's input. And then that this company that Sarah works, works for took the data and then put it together and took that information and made these plans based on what everybody and the residents wanted. So this is what the people want, the people who voted to pre all and asked y'all to be here, um, said that they wanted. So, you know, I understand what you're saying about nobody wants to pay more. It's a little known secret that I'm concerned. But so don't tell everybody on Facebook. But um, I am for 
this plan because it's going to make our town a better place. Our town is growing exponentially. I know we own a real estate business, y'all, and it is no joke. We are the place to be. And um, so I think having a plan in place and just being prepared is so important. Okay, with your business, you have a plan. You would not run your business and have not have a plan. Okay, I understand not wanting to put it all on the budget. I don't want you to put it all on the budget because I do not want to pay for all this right now. But you need a plan. And the plan for when we're ready, we'll be able to get the parts of grants. I know that we just did this bank restoration or we're working on it. And I mean, we got a ton of money. It was almost it was, so, so yeah, seventy-five thousand dollars. Now that wasn't through purchase. I don't think that was something else. But we're having like hundreds of thousand dollars that we can get through the state that we are not getting because we don't have a comprehensive plan. So we just need a plan. And then one by one, when the time is right, y'all can put it in the budget. And then once it's in the budget, we can move from there. I'm with you. I don't want anybody doing this without it being the budget. Don't be slipping anything in there. I, I agree 100% with you, Arthur. I really do. But I just, I really think that as a business, as a town, we should have a plan. And I think it's a great plan that the residents have said that they wanted. And since this is what they want, and this shows what they want, not what I want, not Nicole or Sarah, but what they've asked for, that the responsible thing to do is to pass this plan, show them what they want. Question for you, please. So, having done this part, and that's fine, I'm okay, is that I agree with you. All businesses need to have a plan, just like the town knows that. But, has the cost of this plan ever been communicated to you guys? No, because I think it's absolutely impossible to come up with that cost right now. So, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I was just going to just expand. It's just, I mean, prices are through the roof, and because of that, like certain things on that plan, like I would never say go build like the huge picnic shelter out there right now. Right now, this month would not be the time to go do that. Like mm -hmm. I have a barn right now that's ready to fall down and we're not working on that barn right now because it's, it's just too, it's too much. Yeah, it's ridiculous right now. So it wouldn't be physically responsible. But, you know, maybe next year or two years from now when things calm down, it's just, it's just hard to say. But maybe building trails over on Banner Farm Road, maybe that's not as much money to do. So it just depends is my I guess what I'm saying. So you guys have never seen the cost estimates that we mentioned tonight. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Now would is that what I saw is six point three million dollars. Is that, is that right, Daniel? Give, give or take. Was that today's no, that, that you was, gave, or was that your adding? No, no. Oh, is, sorry, that, is that maybe maybe the cold is that that was the document that I got last week? Just over five. Just over five million. You what? Just over five million. Okay. I did the math part in my head a moment ago. It's not six minutes. Okay. Five. Let's use the five million dollar figure. Mm -hmm. Do you think answer this? Don't answer it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if you saw the cost estimates of this part plan, would it have narrowed the focus? Now, I said answer it, don't answer it, that's okay. Yeah. Is that, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I get what you're saying. And 
I think automatically anybody thinks about spending that much money at one time, it's going to make them think no, because that's a sticker shock value. But Definitely. we're not talking about spending that much money at one time, or all of it, even. And we're talking about, frankly, I'd be happy with just some of it in 10 years. Like you said, we're it's just the guideline. We may just do the trails. We may just do some lighting at the tennis courts, and that may be all we get to. It's just it. We took it's wishes of the town and we put it in the plan. Okay. That's all we did. Okay. That's right. Thank you. Okay. Anybody? Yeah. Other public public comments? <clears throat> I would like to speak if I can. Oh. I can go after. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I won't. I'll, I'll be short and sweet. I'm Tristan Cowie, um, longtime Mills River resident president, and uh, I'm a member on the Parks and Rec uh, board as well. Um, and yeah, I think the only other thing to add would just be, you know, grants. And uh, I think the town is looking for ambition, you know. Um, and if we kind of just sit there as a flat line, you know, it's going to be a lot harder to get, you know, get excitement, get energy, get money from anything. So um, if we kind of put forward a plan and, hey, this is what we do, and we don't do it, uh, at least that's a starting point. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Sarah. Thank you. Can, can you guys hear me okay? Can you hear me? You're a little, you're a little quiet, Sarah. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can. Right, is that a little bit better? Again. Okay. Um, first, I just want to say thank you and applaud the town for. Um... Okay. It's just coming down the ceiling. It's not coming down to the TVs. <laughs> Is that better? Is that better? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you and, and first and foremost applaud the town for undertaking the planning effort because it is a, a current best practice with the state and National Recreation and Park Association to have the plan, have a comprehensive plan in place. It's a, a standard planning tool and common practice to even be able to pursue grant funding. And so for your town, your size to be proactive and conduct the planning efforts is the first step in you guys moving forward um, with understanding your community's need um, and assessing um, potential future need based on your growth. But most importantly, just to pair off what you talked about with the comprehensive plan is it's a vision of, of your community um, to move it forward. And so the next step of this plan is to start to understand cost and phasing. So I really want to just make sure that that you um, understand when we're bringing this forward for approval tonight, that cost is not part of this plan. What we're asking you to, to approve is our understanding and assess, an assessment of need and the vision the community has presented. And then those next steps are to come forward with um, phasing, ac action, implementation, and those things would come before you. And the grants that I am involved with at the state level, that's a requirement. Um, so one really great example is the Parks and Recreation Trust Fund. One reason we had to redo the plan um, that was done before that was phased was to, to be able to go for any grant funding for that park, the plan had to be updated because it showed a baseball field in the back. Um, and, and we knew that that was no longer the vision or a, a best practice with the location being in the floodway. So these are all really fantastic tools for you to continue to move forward and phase. But I just wanted to be really clear, those costs were working conversation costs. They are not part of the master plan. The master plan is an assessment of need and a vision, um, very similar to the comprehensive plan. Thank you, Sarah. Anybody have council questions for Sarah? Thank you, Sarah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. 
Yeah. I'll make a motion that we have a public hearing. I'll second. I was in favor of closing the public hearing. Aye. 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 I'll make a motion to adopt the Parks and Recreation Comprehensive Master Plan. And I just note that we have to adopt the three plans separately. So the Comprehensive Master Plan, the Site Master Plan for Mosul Report, and the Site Master Plan for the Airport for granting basis. And you can state that motion, sir. If you're comfortable with me saying that you have a motion to adopt, and I'll use the full name of the plan. Plus the site plan for each individual part of I'll insert the names of those as well. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? I was in favor of adopting the Arts and Recreation Comprehensive Master Plan and the additional site plan. Aye. 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 Opposed? Roger. Will you please change your microphone? Roger. Well, she's catching up. I see that Sarah Wall has joined us. Yeah, sorry, you missed the beginning, Sarah. But I will present your flat. And recognition of your service on the Board of Adjustment from 2014 to 2021 and the Planning Board 2011 to 2013. We present with the flat. Sir, I've been around a long time, haven't you, sir? Long enough to remember the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next on the regular agenda, item E, request for bond to CL subdivision. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Before you this evening, there's a request of more and some site contractors for a bond uh, to place security on the completion of infrastructure at ASL subdivision. Um, the request was covered $284,000 worth of infrastructure. This is required so that they can support a final flat prior to the, the infrastructure being installed. Council um, has a couple options here. Approve the request, and I request that they have local regional consideration. Um, staff is recommending approval of this. Um, so they begin with that one. On paragraph three, at the end of the sentence, there's a typo. August 31st, 2000, or oh. 2001. 2001, I'm sorry. Thank you. Oh. Uh, right, you know, sir, this is just the yeah. standard. Yes. I don't remember what it is. Uh, the only one that's happened recently is the farm. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they bought it, I think the road is maybe. And this doesn't require any guarantees from the town. Oh, yeah. But for the, for the public's benefit, you just kind of. Oh, sure, that works. Good point. Um, so, the reason that the, the requirement for bond infrastructure exists in the first place is because when a final fire is recorded, the property owner says you can sell the property. And what you don't want to have happen is someone to buy property under the assumption that they're going to have water service and have a road. And then all of a sudden, the developer back away for some reason. Yeah, precisely. Um, and and it's, this ensures that that work will be completed, um, whether through their work or uh, if they happen to be involved in the project, the, the bond will be used to finish that, that work. Mm -hmm. The amount is dictated by a percentage of the total cost. Okay. It's the, the amount comes from the remaining work that has to be completed plus 25 percent, and that's dictated by the state that sets the amount. Mm -hmm. The decisions of the amounts they set they, they set the uh, the bond amount up to that it can be up to 125 percent of what the line of expenditures. Those came from the engineer for the projects testing, and they were confirmed by the town engineer, who actually said that. The, Cost of the work was less than what they proposed, but since they've already created this reduction, that is. Okay. 
they were over over bonded. They did. They, well, they what happened was they submitted the application for the bond, but they kept working. So some of that they included them were able to get done before before the season. All right, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the request for bond for the cottage that we built. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right, now discussion on zoning for the two parcels zoning to make sure the industrial, funding school house, and then a pond. Just a, just a quick summary on this. This, this came before you uh, back in April, excuse me, in March, rather, there was a discussion amongst the board and a public hearing was set to rezone two properties on Schoolhouse Road. One, one near the intersection of Bennett Farm, uh, which is vacant, and the other one is in full of outside of property. Uh, after some consideration and discussion with the owners and the public, this council withdrew that request uh, in good faith, and then the applicants for the owners were able to come back. With, with an idea to um, both assuage the council's concern for the public's, but also give them something that they think they can work with. Uh, and so we have received a text amendment um, application that would allow for an additional use within the neighborhood commercial zoning district. So if this council chose to, which was the original plan, is to go from light industrial to neighborhood commercial, uh, and then the text amendment were approved. Um, they would be able to, they being the applicant, be able to use the property as, as they would like to do storage, warehousing, uh, things that are. So this evening, you are free to do what it is you would like to do. Uh, whether that's initiate the other zoning, um, take no action, uh, whatever that is, have to play in. You received, you, you said you did receive a formal application? I did. A signed application? Yep. Okay. The signed application and the fee was dropped off this afternoon. Um, I, I have the text here this evening if you, if you want to review it. I don't think it's happening. And process wise, if, if the text amendment, um, well, the text amendment has been submitted. So process wise, it will be reviewed by the planning board uh, in July. And come back to council plus the time for the recommendation on it. And that's based upon neighborhood commercial, which that property is not neighborhood commercial. Correct. Right. That's correct. So this would be, you have to really separate them, although that's hard to because they overlap. So one, one question is whether or not council wants to pursue a rezone on those two properties as originally discussed. And the original request was to go to neighborhood commercial. So that's a separate discussion. And then the other discussion, which will come back to you all as a body, is this text amendment. What the applicants are proposing is to take the neighborhood commercial district as a whole, not, not these two properties, but as a whole, and modify the standards to allow additional uses with very specific standards, including property from those houses, property lines, for that nature. So it would be changing our entire neighborhood commercial yeah. all over town. That's right. I want to see the effect. Okay. All right. I, I, mean, I agree. We have to we have to see what we're voting on. Well you're not voting on anything. Or we have to see what we're discussing, talking about right. before we can make an informed decision. Well just to be fair to the applicant, they submitted an application for a tax amendment and they're entitled to go through the process to have it approved by the planning board. And it will come back to this board before it can't be approved that the board approved. I'll, I'll pass out the text real quick. No. It, no, I don't think we need to see it right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not go through it. We don't want to have any That's appearance right. of That's right. Yes. He did something wrong. For lack of a better way to it. So so they just let it run its process. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait. I don't know if I'm using the That kind of fell apart. So what we have to is it if I, if I hear you correctly? We have to decide if we're open to rezone this piece of property, neighborhood commercial, or not. Is, is that fact? 
you have to decide whether or not you want to initiate that request again. Okay. So, is that? Let's say that we rezone neighborhood commercial. Mm -hmm. Then, I think I heard you correct. Then, the tax amendment would come up at a later date. That's right. For neighborhood commercial. That's right. Which, not all, the the tax amendment <coughs> would not only apply to these parcels if we rezone it it would apply to all neighborhood commercial that's right okay so the only thing that's before us tonight are we interested in rezoning this neighborhood commercial okay. is that that's correct is it every word I can see I can see what you're saying, but if we move forward at this point, not seeing the text, I, I understand that the board family first, but we're basically that one property or dictate what the neighborhood commercial zoning could be for the entire town and group. They've made the application, it's up to them. Board and this council decided they've already, they've already put that in motion. But it's going to, it's going to affect every portion that's already known, neighborhood commercial on the town. If, if this council approves the request, yes. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I, see what you're saying. I, see. I think, but I think for what well, our discussion, because we have to look at it, is two totally different things. And that if we feel that that property is best suited as neighborhood commercial and not light industrial, that is a separate issue from what they're asking. You know, we can make a neighbor commercial and we can deny their testimony request and then the property is never commercial. We don't have to accept their request. That is, we go through the process, it goes to the planning board, they make, they review it, they make the recommendation to us as to whether or not we should change the code. We have the final determination if we want to change the code or not. It can't be a contract because that'd be contract zoning. So we can't say, if you guys, if we adopt this, then we'll rezone it never commercial because it'll be with it. So there's no guarantee to them or to us based upon either action that they go together. So I think it's two totally separate issues and you have to look at it. They have an absolute no, right? Correct. Okay. David. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I make a motion for a five minute recess? I'd like to make a motion for a five minute recess. I'll second. We're back in five minutes.
about the um, parcels. We don't actually have to take any action on this at the moment. Right. That's correct. So, so in, just something I'm just thinking about. So in the form of a text amendment, um, something that could go along with that would be a conditional zoning district. I know that we don't allow that in the current time period. Right. That that could be implemented with a text amendment, yes. A conditional zoning district opportunity. Would you like our council be opposed to Daniel researching conditional zoning districts? I think that'd be a good idea. I'd be all for that. Or Michael. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we've been done with dating for so long. Oh, yeah, we right. now have going well, let's not tell them what we've asked them to do. So oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. You'll learn, I believe. Yeah. I'm okay with what you said, but I just don't want to carry on and on and on. Sure. Yeah. Well, okay. it's, it's got a certain time. The application's in, so there's a certain time frame you have to follow. Right. And yes, there, there is a built in time why the, the application was submitted 30 days prior to the board meeting as, as required. Uh, the next step would be planning board's consideration, and they, they do have a, uh, I think it's a 45 day time frame in which to render a decision if they need more time. And then it'll be back to the council for consideration. Okay, so it sounds like we have. Let me just clarify. So, they have sort of the application for neighborhood commercial attendance. We're looking at considering conditional zoning as a separate text amendment, correct? To have we're not considering doing anything. We're just asking for research from you on conditional zoning. Perfect. And we're not, I think we're done with the discussion on the bank on there. Okay. Is that the correct statement? I'm ready to move on. Okay. All right. That moves us to IMG, the volunteer committees and boards discussion, which is research that council had asked to. Conduct. Well, please go ahead. Yeah, so, sorry, I wasn't sure if you were asking. Except, uh, a couple of months ago, I believe it was also in March, Council uh, decided to postpone uh, any reappointments or new appointments to any of the town's boards and committees uh, with the intention of, of considering their, their roles, um, their goals, and the uh, method in which the town would like to move forward with those committees. And so um, Stu did some tremendous research on towns across the state of North Carolina, uh, asking about what kinds of committees they have. They have similar committees to the town of Mills River. Uh, in the, the spreadsheet and uh, memo was provided to you in advance of this evening. Um, I'm, too happy, I'm sure Stu was happy to go over any questions you have. Um, that's what we have before you on Again, no action required at this point. Uh, this is for discussion purposes. And I will confess that I was the one who asked to have this added to the agenda tonight. Um, and I know we've talked about this as a board just a little bit over the last few weeks, but my my thought process here is that you know, tonight maybe should be kind of to discuss what Sue has discovered her research, which, as usual, um, Sue amazed me because I popped in last week and I, I said, you know, uh, I, I really think we ought to discuss the advisory boards. Can we maybe sneak that onto the agenda next week? And Sue pulled out two, two spreadsheets and lots of other information. So she had a three-page um, memo all typed up. And I thought I was going to be causing her some amount of stress by asking if we could discuss that this week. And in fact, she had 90% of the work done. So as, as usual, Sue, thank you. Um, that was, I, I didn't feel as bad leaving as I did coming in. So 2019, put it here. That's right. That's 100% correct. And, and, um, and you're welcome. Never leave anything to the last <laughs> Yes. So going back to why I've kind of been thinking this is a necessary thing. Um, we have a number of advisory committees, and some of them are extremely important, and ones that are, are that we listen to, we attend our meetings, and, and others that, and I have friends who, for instance, are on the finance committee, 
Um, and they have described that to me as very light grip. And so I wanted to look at the different advisory committees and just sort of get an understanding of should we um, create a, a certain uh, size board and have that applied to each committee? Should we look at the structure of the board? Should we look at the size of the board? Should we look at, at the boards themselves and decide whether they're whether they're necessary. Well, in the case of the the uh, finance committee, we've got some really capable people who might <laughs> serve on other boards and be really, really effective on those other boards. So that's kind of my thought process coming into this. And, and I know um, we also have this on the agenda. I uh, believe the end of June. Is that correct, Sue? Um, it, yes, it's on your agenda for June 24th, unless you tell me otherwise. So I really just wanted to kind of open this up to council in case um, there were any comments or, or questions from public court. Ex exactly. Um, you know, as to directions that, that might be preferred by, by council, um, you know, a lot of times with a legacy situation, let's, let's face it, this town has been in existence for 18 years now. You set up advisory committees in the beginning and they just kind of stay static for a certain amount of time. So I think it's time to just kind of give them a fresh look if everything is copacetic, then we're good. But I did want to just make sure that we, we look at them, we look at the size of them, we, we decide whether they're effective and we want to keep them, we want to modify them. But you know, I just want to open that discussion up tonight so that we're more prepared for perhaps taking action on anything we want to do next month. Now. On the on the plan board on Exhibit E, is that it's got a line through Wayne Carlin. Did we kick him off? Um, we didn't kick anybody off. It's, no, but his term has um, his term expired, and there's a freeze on any reappointments or appointments. So he and James Kendall have also been, both been told that they would need to reapply. But as of this agenda package, he is still on the board. And no, his term expired May 29th. Okay. What is the date? That's Saturday. Sorry, May, Saturday. Saturday. May 29th. May 29th. Yeah, May 29th. So yes, until Saturday. So Saturday. There, so there should not be a line through his name. Yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about the planning board now. So there's, uh, at the last meeting, there was only five planning board members present. Is that correct? Then? That is correct. And that was, uh, they were hearing the anointed word, what we just heard. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, I think we need to. I think we need to do some work to get that that board filled out uh, pretty quickly. But you gotta get people that are gonna show up too. Exactly. Do we have like attendance records? You we really do have attendance, attendance records. I mean, just like, is there like someone who's habitually on any of the boards habitually doesn't? I'm I'm not I'm not positive about that. Each one of these staff members who. Um, supports a board, keeps that attendance record, so I don't see the other boards. I don't know about the planning board. Or, mm -hmm. and, and I do have applications on file. Uh, I did not bring them in tonight. Mm -hmm. The Board of Adjustments mm -hmm. is running at a full board, mm -hmm. just minus the two alternates, right? That's right. What I've seen here, first and second alternate are vacant. Yes. Is there, so I noticed that, um, I guess for lack of a better word, it was almost 50-50 that a lot of people combined their planning board with the Board of Adjustment? Um, yeah, it's just, just shy of 50-50. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was just pointing that out. Well, I think it's, I think it's very relevant because we've had difficulty finding people. 
Um, so it might be something you want to consider if you're a board and want to answer boards um, with the lesson of the, the head of the head of planning. Could you make it a subcommittee of the planning board? I've never really seen a subcommittee of yeah. the planning board. X amount of members on the planning board, and then you have a subcommittee from the planning board that's the board of judgment. Just so basically, you'd be suggesting that you'd have a planning board and, and certain members, rather than the entire, entire board right. serving as your board of adjustment, you would have certain members. Yeah, just that. Idea. Depends on the size of your planning board versus it, your, your board of adjustment is, is more of a statutory yeah. size. Um, but there's also an ordinance that governs that. Right now, there's an ordinance that governs the size of your planning board as well. So if you make any changes, we need to change those. I'll just throw this out there. Something that I've kind of been thinking about as, as we look at these boards is the concept of you know, if we decided, let's just use a planning board as an example. If we decided that nine members were too many, if we decided seven is the right number, um, what we might do is, is think about attendance and, and who's showing up and who's doing the work and, and we know um, that certain members bring a lot of effort in to the planning board and they're to be commended for that and they, they certainly wouldn't want to be. It, it would be people that we would want to reappoint to planning board. But also, and Rogers mentioned this a number of times in the past, that you know it's it's ideal if you sort of balance these boards out between districts, right? And that's hard depending on your applications. True. Um, so in some ways, I wonder if if we weren't going to go through this process and say, okay, look, look, we'll just, just for sake of argument, we'll seven is the right number for planning board. Um, let's go down the table. You appoint, you suggest somebody from district two. Mm -hmm. We'll vote on that person. I suggest something just one. We we'll vote on that person. District three, go on down the table until we have at least two from each district. And then we have one extra. I mean, that's just kind of what I'm thinking in terms of just getting to a really effective board. I mean, I, I, I kind of just thought, how could we go about this process in a way that's fair and would end up with a, a balanced um, number of members representing each district to start with. And so I, I've kind of thought about that as a possibility. I just want to see what everybody else thought or if they thought that was a crazy idea or anyway. Ron, is that I absolutely agree with you. How do we get from point A to point B? No offense, but a planning board member from district one has, has different thoughts than from somebody that lives up in Boston. Mm -hmm. Well, so I think that that's what makes the board these two thoughts and everybody in between that said, okay, this affects me, this doesn't affect me, and we listen to what they say. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, I agree with you. So I like your analogy of going down to the table, so forth. So how do we get from point A to point B? Do we ask all the existing boards to re renew their interest? We pull their, you know, if you're interested in staying, we have all the applications. I'm sure we have them on file, all of them, right? <clears throat> I only have to keep them two years. So, so I may have to go. I will have some of them, but I won't have all of them. We could ask, we could approach each person on each board and ask them to restate their interest. There's so, I'm, I'm sorry, so I don't want to do it. Orly um, <clears throat> Taylor is the uh, planning board secretary, and she was just texting me to let me know that um, there are no issues with attendance on the planning board, um, and we're happy to get you any records on any of the boards. 
some of the, I don't know about going through the, the formal application process, is that there's some people that are on the boards, when, whether in my district or not, I would support them 100%. So, that makes sense. Sure. Okay. I think it's the only, you know, of course, the Ag Advisory Board is always, there's just not a lot of representatives for that. So, that's not necessarily a district. Right, right, right. There's just not enough farmers that live in the district. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's a board that I would be inclined to just move to quickly along. Um, Good people on it. Um, you know, they give us great advice. Um, heavily involved with with comp plan and, and, and have given us outstanding information where that's concerned. So, um, and honestly, that'd be the board with the attendance issues. If you're a farmer <laughs> and it's a Friday morning and you need to be in the field and not at your meeting, that's that would probably be the one. That's random, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, is it? Going back to my little history lesson, is that on the finance committee, we tend to leave a slot open for a fire department designee. But Fred, Fred is in the fire department, so he's on there, so that's okay. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Where did his turn just end to make that think? Not sure. Is that this year? It's a, it says May 15th, 2021. Yeah. But, Sam, just to respond to your question, how do we get from point A to point B? That's really why I wanted to bring this up tonight so that we don't get to, you know, the, the end of June and point where we're in and start pointing people and we're good. I kind of want to chew on that a little bit first and give everybody a chance to, to kind of be thinking about this and what would be ideal in terms of having great committees, getting great advice, having the, the right people on the right committees. And in some cases, you know, I kind of look at finance, for example, and I look at Sue's research, and I don't see finance committees in other municipalities. So, I think we might be able to repurpose some of those they, folks. They might better serve us on other, exactly. other places. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Because finance committee meets what quarterly? Quarterly. Yeah. And they were originally established when it was a very small town staff with just yeah. like Sue. Mm -hmm. So now we have Sue and we have a town manager. We have finance <laughs> director and we have a town manager and we have an auditor and we have the auditor for the auditor. And we have the subcommittee on council, yes. so we have a lot of finance oversight yes. already. So it might be a, they might be duplicating what we're already doing. I do think we need to poll uh, everybody who's on the existing boards to find out if they're still interested in serving. Because what we may find out, I hope this isn't the case. What we may find out is if you poll the people on the board of adjustment. Like, get me out of here. Four of them might be like, oh, I want out of here. Oh, I'm done. And if it is, we know how hard it is to find people for board adjustment. So at that point in time, we may have to say, right. it's the planning board's responsibility now to be the board of adjustment. Right. So I think it's fair that before our, maybe our next meeting is that we, we get the board's poll to find out who wants to continue with the committee. So I would like, in addition to polling them, what would be their second choice committee? If they wanted off where they are, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. or they were they were not renewed where they are what would be their second choice i think that's the closest thing like their backup to, the closest thing to a board adjustment is obviously the planning board right. and that's where we're i'm afraid we're going to get in some trouble if we don't fill those seats uh, pretty quickly is there a, is there any applications on file for the parks maybe yes there are i mean that one's usually pretty popular. There were several the last time. We um, four or five at the moment. Okay. Um, just did we put two on the last time we had a vacancy? Wasn't that? Yes. Yeah. And then, then um, Walt Puckett resigned. Um, just FYI, do, do whatever you choose. It's council's choice. 
but um, a, a planning board develops your ordinances and a uh, board of adjustment yeah. interprets what the planning board has done. Doesn't mean you can't give them the same purpose. I mean, same, same people, but it, but it is two different purposes. Yeah. One other thought I had, Ms. Um, Brandon, since you brought up the, um, the Parks Committee, um, I noticed from Sue's research that a number of municipalities have a Parks and Greenways Committee. And since this town is now getting into the business of, of building greenways and, and planning for greenways, and, that, and a lot of the roadways that are coming in, we've negotiated that greenways come along with them. Um, I wonder if we shouldn't modify that group's goals just a bit, expand their role, and instead of just focusing on the boundaries of this park, give them some oversight and some, some uh, allow them to, to guide us a little bit with respect to uh, multi-use paths and, and greenways. Um, I also think it might attract some really qualified to let see people from the Blue Ridge Bicycle Club really want to be um, you know, a part of that process. So just the I think that it's important for whoever, whoever is, whoever the staff person is, and I'm going to use Orly since she's not here. She's, she's listening. That's fine. <laughs> is that she says that she don't have an attendance problem. Well, that's good. Now, I've been to a couple of planning board meetings, and there's some people that show up. There's some people that don't show up. Well, I can understand missing a meeting every now and then. I've probably missed maybe three or four council meetings in 20 years. But I think is that if they really want to serve, regardless of emergencies, then they need to be sitting here in a big chair. So I think we have some direction maybe before the next <laughs> meeting. Is that fair? Maybe. So you want us to pull the existing committee. Are you still interested in what would be your second choice? Mm -hmm. Do we need to update like our, I mean, I may not know some of these people from Adam, um, you know, what their background is, what their qualifications were. It, it, I don't think I can say this, but it's all on the application. But if we don't, but if we don't still have those to look at. I think it's a fair request to make everybody vote in there. Just an updated application? It's, it's a one page document. It's not like we're asking for. Your birth certificate. Yes. I mean, you know, I mean, this. And, and we could, with, as, we, as we're giving it to, the, to each one of the committee members, say, please put down first and second choice. Oh, we got it. With the same, with the same. I would, yeah, except the Ag Committee. Ag committee. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I also think this is an opportunity, you know, if we know people who would be just rock star applicants, you know, bring them in and let you know, let's let's make sure that we're composing these boards of the best possible people. Um, I just for instance, I know I know a couple people who'd be just terrific on on, on planning board um, from my district. So. If I might suggest, as you're considering all of this, if you repurpose a board, or even if you don't, you might consider charters for each committee, giving them what you expect of them, what their makeup is, what you expect of them, what basically what their goals are. I do, I do have a, a couple of quick points, okay. if I may. Uh, just uh, bear in mind, uh, just keep in back in mind, we, we have a, the Bike and Pedestrian Planning Grant um, project that just kicked off, and now it does require a steering committee. Um, and we do have a list of, uh, from the state, sort of semi-required, suggested um, 
backgrounds, not individual persons. Um, so just be thinking about that as we get to a point of appointing people. Um, that we need to do that. We should fill that as well. Yeah, and then and then with regards to the making those ever standing committee, that was my finance formally adopted, it would be um, useful to expand that formally. Do you need a motion for please? I make a motion we disband the uh, conference plan. If it is all second, so is all. steering committee. All those in favor of dissolving the existing steering committee? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Uh, no, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a timeline in which you'd like to see these applications back? We don't want to get anything, any of these committees made too wide that we can't um, function. I, to be honest with you, I was, I was hoping that we, as a board, might be ready to take action in a month's time. Does that give you time, Sue? And Patty, and Amy? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking if, as long as the boards meet, if we have each um, staff liaison take applications to the committee meetings and have them complete them as part of the agenda that maybe we'd um, be able to get them back in a more timely fashion. Did we also put on the website that we're taking applications for for, for all committees? We there's always a standing application but we'll, we'll make it uh, more more we'll prominent more right out. So we'll open okay, applications. Yeah and we'll put it on Facebook as well. It sounds like everyone's meeting between now and June, except for the finance committee. We'll return to that All right. And most of those members have turned over recently, so it would. I'll double check. I may have their applications, and just have to ask them if they had a second choice. All right. Uh, staff updates. Do you have anything to update? No further report. Okay. Parks and Recreation, Nicole. <coughs> Just real quick, we do have our regular blood drive tomorrow, um, 11 to 4. So if you know anyone there in very critical need, I think we're, we're short on lumber, we're short on steel, we're short on blood. So anybody um, who's able to donate um, between 11 and 4 tomorrow would be really great if you would come. You need, you um, need uh, sorry? Do you need appointments or can we show up? You can show up. Um, it's better if you have an appointment. You can find your waiting list. I think there was still about 10 appointments available uh, last time I checked. So at various times throughout the day. Oh, um, just real quick, Brookview Middle School finished up their season. They lost their playoff game to Smoky Mountain Middle School, unfortunately, this Monday. Um, lost 14 13. It was, a, it was a tough loss. Um, but they were really great to have out there this year. Um, lots and lots of folks in the park just came and watched and enjoyed having them. They were a very respectful group. Um, they helped us clean out the dugouts every day. They just came with their brooms and swept. And um, I was very happy to have them here. And, they were very appreciative of, of being able to come. So I um, look forward to hopefully having them back next year. Um, other than that, Parks has been uh, really busy. Uh, we expect the school going out next week for traffic uh, to pick up. And then lastly, we have submitted the permit for the Riverbank Restoration Project, and we're hoping to have approval by the end of the month and looking to um, start to uh, bid that job out in June or early, early July. Question? I was just going to ask. You want? I was just going to ask. Oh, so. Go ahead. When the, when the ball team was out here, how was the park? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, there's a, you know, there's always the people when it happens anytime there's anything that they don't look at the back parking lot to see if there's actually parking, and our rangers just said, hey, make sure you park over there every once in a while. But you know, we never had issues with um, you know too much. You know, overflow and people parking where they shouldn't. Okay. I was just going to ask how the field performed. Very well. Yeah, thankfully we had <laughs> some dry weather. It actually got by the end of a little too dry. It was a little bit like concrete out there that last yeah. week. <laughs> um, but yeah, it has been been really great. Um, have had kind of great conditions. We had that really wet early on, but as soon as we hit dry weather, we've been doing 
do an excellent um, deal of so. Thank you, Nicole. And some the administrator, you have a report for us. Yeah, I do. Um, we meet with Alan Steinbeck once or twice a week just to make sure nothing gets dropped out during the transition. We have two certificates of occupancy for two already, uh, two certificates of compliance, two zoning permits, annual I conducted the final zoning inspection of the Gillette Lowe's 90,000 square foot building on Grano Farm Road. Uh, we also, as you uh, alluded to, attended the kickoff meeting with NCGOT for the bike ped uh, planning effort. Uh, we had our weekly or bi weekly meeting with SmartGov for the new permit system. Uh, we also met with Natalie Berry with Henderson County about um, transitioning the watershed regulation uh, from the county to the town. Um, I received the Mills River Fire Department plans uh, just recently, so hopefully we're looking to start reviewing those next week. Also reviewed the three subdivision plats and uh, entertained a call about possible rezoning. Well, that was interesting bidding. Thank you. And Daniel, anything else? Town Manager. I don't have uh, anything specific to add. I just I just wanted to thank you all for your consideration of the plans that were adopted this evening. Um, that's a very big step to the town. I think they're going to serve the community well. Um, and again, I just want to um, thank staff for their support in um, developing the budget and just keeping us afloat day to day. Because it was a very busy place and we want to rely upon each other. And lastly, uh, again, I want to welcome Mike to the town. Um, obviously, you can tell me this is the busy department and fill that in here. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, council comments? I've got one quick one. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to comment real quick that um, yesterday, House Bill 947 passed the North Carolina State House by a vote of 109 to 0. And what this bill will do is it's going to, um, to introduce $750 million. Um, of federal money specifically to build out broadband infrastructure in rural areas. So, um, you know, as we've been working with the American Rescue Plan and we know how much money is coming from the river, we also know that, that uh, the state is going to be building out broadband uh, in rural areas and we certainly qualify for that. So, very hopeful that um, we can use our funds on other projects. Thank you, Brian. I want to um, ask if we can do a quick closed session just to discuss um, property acquisition. I don't think I'm sure that we have to closed session. We'll ask staff can say, but we'll ask audience to leave. And if you don't want to stay, if you don't want to stay, don't ask. Anybody's angry outside the room. Let's turn it out there. Shane, did you miss a vote? We did. We did. Sorry. I was thinking Mr. Chairman. I said we did. I'll do it. All those in favor? All right. I didn't want to start talking for everybody.